Hello, beautiful people. So today we are with John Antoine. He's a sale team accelerator, done over 25 million in high ticket sales, four different influence to multiple seven and eight figures, building world class sales team to paradigm shift strategy and culture. He takes also unique approach to selling in a new economy based in building authentic and deep relationship with prospects. No tactics, no manipulations. So how are you today, Johnny? I'm doing well, how are you? Really nice, man. How is everything going in the, the times, in the current times? Yeah, everything's great. I think people want to look at external phenomenon that's going on around them and let that dictate what they can and can't do. But to me, that's just playing into a victim mentality. And I believe that we inherit the victim mentality from our environment and how we grow up and media writing the narrative. And so I think it's very interesting when people say, how are you doing in these times? I don't, see these times as anything unique or different. I think that this is actually an amazing opportunity if you look at it that way. So I love when people ask that question because then it tells me that most people are probably looking at it from it's going to take away from them or it's a loss or it's scary and not to downplay or discredit what's going on and not to um, you know, put anyone down or say that that's, it's not something that's real or hasn't affected people's livelihood. That would be disingenuous and inauthentic to say that. Um, at the same time, when it comes to business and my life, uh, you know, things are improved. Uh, things have slowed down. Clarity has been, you know, something on a high, getting more and more clear as to what's important to me. And, uh, and seeing what the opportunities are, whereas most people are looking at it, the pandemic as it's taking away from them. It's a loss. It, they play into that victim mentality. And I don't think victim mentality is ever going to go away. I think human beings latch on to different events to victimize themselves and do nothing um, in times like this. But the successful people that I surround myself with in my environment are seeing this as an awesome opportunity, as a game changer, as something that's one of the best things that's ever happened in their career, especially in online marketing. So that's my answer to that, bro. Well, and we start really, really strong. So I want uh, first, if it's possible for the people that still don't know you, if you can tell me a little bit about your story, about your childhood, like what do, what do you want to share with us? Feel free. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so I know I look just like your average American uh, when in fact I actually am a refugee from Iraq. My family are uh, Middle Eastern cr Christians from Iraq, which is probably 1% of the population at this point in Iraq. It's predominantly Shiite and Sunni Muslim. And, um, and that's our indigenous homeland. And so my, I'm first generation American. And so my family came here in the seventies, eighties and nineties. And uh, my first language is actually Aramaic, which is the predecessor language to Hebrew and, um, and Arabic. So I had a very interesting time growing up, learning about the old country and escaping the violence and the persecution that happened there. And, you know, immigrating to the United States, my parents really instilled in me grit, hard work, um, really pushing yourself to distinguish yourself from other people. Um, and, you know, just how to love and how to be passionate about things. Uh, I got a lot of that from my parents because they had to fight for their freedom and to fight for what they believe in. And so they instilled that burning desire and fire within me through their actions. And so uh, that's a little bit about me. I grew up in Detroit and now I reside in sunny San Diego. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about my background. Perfect. And like, I want to go to, to, to a word that you, you, you said it in the, in the first introduction, 
Vitam, why do you think that we victimize ourselves so much? Why do you think that? Yeah, so I, I believe it's built into our hereditary. It's, it's a biological thing, right? Mm. So a biological thing, what I mean by that? What I mean is that, see, human beings, the way we're designed when you study you know, neurology, when you study, when you study psychology, you understand that human beings, the whole goal of the brain is to have the body survive. So what I mean by that, well, your brain is only here to help your body survive because deep down in us is these survival instincts that get built in from thousands and thousands of years. So we have those, that biological hereditary, you know, within us to survive everything. And so I think when something happens that is a perceived threat, our brain doesn't know the difference between a pandemic and a bear attacking us, right? So the chemical response, the release of cortisol, the, the, the adrenaline, the nephrine, the anxiety, those feelings all come from your brain thinking that your body needs to survive. And so I feel the media constantly creates that that automatic chemical response that happens in the chemistry of your brain and body, right? And so that over a prolonged period of time builds these personality traits and characteristics that influence the way we look at life, the way we make decisions, the way we think about things and take actions, which affects our results. And in those results changes our, our next thought and our next action, right? So I really believe it's ingrained in us from thousands of years of not only genetics, but environment. And, um, and so it's really important for us to raise awareness and consciousness and not live into that mentality of a biological automatic response. So that's why I believe it exists in um, that's why I've been obsessed with personal development and self-help and enlightenment, modern day enlightenment, right? Because what you can become aware of, you can do something about. And that's what's amazing about human beings that separates us from animals is the power of choice and the power to actually choose how we think and what we think about and what that does influences our feelings and then our actions. And so that would be my answer to you. Does that answer your question? <laughs> More than I want. Perfect, perfect, John. So, like, I understand that the, the, my question, the second question goes, how we can change that? I, I think that you already start answering by, you tell me if I'm right or not, by being aware. But if you can tell me a little bit more, how we can change that kind of victimization mentality that we have well i mean it all comes down to awareness first it's first you have to admit that environment plays an important role mm. right and that we inherited a lot of the views the lot the lens that we look at life right mm. the lens we look at life a lot of times comes from our environment and how we grew up so this is well known and well documented in psychology. It's not something new or groundbreaking. It's been very clear for the last 50 years that environment plays the most crucial role in how you develop your personality, right? And your personality is what drives your behaviors. And how we break out of that is you have to change your behavior. And how do you change your behavior? Well, if you look at how behavior is formed, it's formed through environment. So the first and most important thing is to change your environment. Get around other people who are aware of victimization and the survival mechanism that runs human beings and start to surround yourself with those individuals so that you can become aware of where you're operating out of survival or operating from purpose. Whoa, whoa, perfect. And you're touching another word that I want to go so you are going to the to the next question so purpose so uh johnny can you tell me how did you find your purpose in life 
Yeah. I think find how did I find my purpose in life? Not to bash your question or anything like that, but I invite you to consider that, you, you know, everybody, you have an opportunity to live your purpose moment to moment. And it could be something that you're constantly still searching for. And I feel like you have a choice to live your purpose that day or not. So I believe living your purpose is a moment to moment phenomenon. It's not this binary thing. Well, once you found your purpose, there are plenty of people who find a vocation. They, they find a symbol, they find something where they're like, they're compelled into action and they feel it's their purpose. And then over time, they, they fall back, back into not wanting to do it. Right. So I don't think anybody's really found their purpose. Um, and I feel like you have a choice where you're either living in fear or scarcity, or you're living on purpose, meaning you're doing something to inspire others. I truly believe that purpose is when you take your messes in life and you turn them into your message. You know, one of the quotes I love most is William Shakespeare is, you know, the, the meaning, the meaning of life is to find your gifts and the purpose of life is to give it away. And so I believe my gifts are communication. My gifts are inspiring people. My gifts are reframing the once thought negative things from the past to positive things that can inspire others into action. For that, I feel like I'm living my purpose. Tomorrow, I might change my mind. Tomorrow, I might say that, you know, this doesn't compel me into action. This isn't what I really want to do. Um, so I don't know if that answered your question, but I don't believe anybody's really found their purpose. I feel like they're either living in purpose in that moment or they're living in fear and scarcity and they're not being generous and giving. So I, I believe everybody's purpose is to give to human beings. That's what I truly feel. Perfect. Now, uh, like, I think you, you already answered my question. Uh, which is the advice that you will give for the ones that feel lost? What do you mean by that? That uh, didn't find their purpose or should they, I think that you already answered in your, in your previous answer by the continue searching. If you feel lost, if you feel that you don't have a purpose in life, because I think it's, at my point of view, it's, uh, I think everyone has a flame. Of course, it's changing along you, but I think we always should have a meaning, at my opinion. Uh, I don't yeah. know if you agree with me. And sometimes we are lost. And sometimes we need just, or to try. I don't know what, what you will say to that. If I feel lost, if I don't know what you do in this situation. Well, I first like to ask questions. When someone says, I feel lost, or what do I do? I always ask. I always ask questions because if you seek to understand before being understood, then you're going to compel people into a lot more action. When you try to pretend you have it all figured out and you start just coaching people, then they're less likely to respond because human nature is doing what, like the opposite of what we're told to do, right? Or the opposite, unless we're actually seeking that advice. So it just depends on the situation. I would ask a lot of questions, right? Because if I can understand what someone's going through, I can help influence them. I think the highest form of influence is when you get someone else to tell you what sort of actions they're going to take. And so whoever's watching this and is feeling lost, I would say, seek a mentor, find someone who inspires you, find someone who you want to be like and ask them a ton of questions and help have them help you find whatever it is that you feel like you could do in your life. Um, you know, I, I think it'd be irresponsible for me to give one solution for every single person mm -hmm. that needs help, if that makes sense. No, I think you already, you already answered my question. Yeah, it's perfect. Like finding a mentor, if you just try it. And if I already find my purpose, but I'm too afraid to try it. Because I, I'm in my comfort zone, I have my, my job, and I'm too afraid to try something new. Well, what drives you, bro? What's your purpose? My purpose in life? Now, I will say that is, man, sharing the message of, of other ones and learning, really. I, I love to learn. I think learning okay. and 
passing the message at the same time okay. by the why, podcast tone. Why do you feel like it's important to pass the message? Because I think that the message is important. Why I don't do you know feel if, like it's important? Because it's important to me. <laughs> what is important to you? Uh, that I will say my family, uh, my values, and not a lot more. I will say that that is important to me. Like, yeah, I will say that. But I will have okay. to. What drives you? What, what makes you get up every day to do these interviews? What, what are you trying to accomplish? Man, learning the possibility of learning and really, I think if I can, if I, because I, at my point of view, I'm interviewing really interesting people and inspiring. So I think all of the people that interview until now have a really deep and important message. So I'm just the, as a transmitter. So, and it's, it's something that I wanted to do for uh, like one year. I was one year thinking about doing a podcast, like planting the, the seed. And yeah, I think it's that, man. I don't know if it's the right answer, but yeah, it's, I'm really curious. And like for you, like it's your, I wanted to interview with you because of your charisma. Really, it's something that it's compelling. And yeah, it's that it's it's the message, it's the personality of the person, and like it's man, having a conversation with you or with I, I had last week a couple of days ago I had with a UFC fighter, so it's it's so it's just something interesting for you. It's stimulating you. You're learning, man. Yeah, learning. It's for me. It's really and after I. I think it's really important learning and applying the knowledge. Okay. Can you tell me also a, a little bit about that? Because I think in nowadays, in my opinion, we have access to a lot of information. Mm -hmm. But after yeah. there is the gap between learning and applying. Yeah. How do you think that we can close that gap? Learning and applying. Well, um, I believe you have to work on, like, it's kind of like, like, I believe Ed Milet said this. It's like, you have to build your own respect and trust for yourself, right? Because if you don't build, if you don't respect yourself and you, you don't do the little things, like the little habits every single day that you know will help you, like breathing, drinking water, eating healthy, working out, um, you know, thinking positive thoughts, uh, you know, always giving back and showing love and spreading love and spreading joy and having charisma. I feel like if you don't have those things for other people and you're not expressing those things daily, then I think is you really start to lose trust with your ability to do anything else, whether it's in your business or your life. And so I believe if you win your morning and you're successful with the mind, the body and the spirit working on those things every single day, I think what happens is you build trust within yourself that you can succeed in these little actions and then you do the same thing with your business actions. You know, you need to market to get leads. You know, you need to get on sales calls to close the leads and you know, you need to train to get better and you need to fulfill for your clients. I think if you build habits, very healthy habits that work on your mind, body and spirit, you build that trust and respect for yourself. And then when it comes to doing the little things that are monotonous for your business, it just comes easy. Perfect. So. Perfect. I wanted to go a little bit more uh, deep in the part of the, the, the habits, morning routines. I understand already that is important for you having daily habits and uh, routine. Uh, what is your morning routine? Can you tell me a little bit about what is a normal uh, morning for Johnny? Yeah, I, um, I, I think the first thing, most important thing to do, if you look at thousands of years ago, what did people do? Well, they woke up during the sunlight. I think if you can wake up to natural sunlight and not expose yourself to your phone within your first one to two hours of waking up, that's the most important thing for people. There is science behind blue light. 
right? I have blue light blockers that I block light, right? Blue light, artificial light. Because if you think about for tens of thousands of years, human beings didn't have artificial light. It's only in the last hundred years that we've ever had light. So to say that the human body is used to artificial light is accepting neurological disorders to come, you know? So I really think you should get out into nature and out for a walk. So I take my dog for a walk. I do some deep breathing. I do hydrotherapy where I go into a sauna and then I go into a cold pool and a cold shower. And then I stretch um, and, and do um, myofascial release, which is, let me just grab something here. Grab anything like, like a, a foam roller and rolling on different trigger points in your body. Um, I believe that does a lot of really good positive things for your nervous system. And then making sure you eat vitamins and drink lots of water and, and eat healthy. I think, um, you know, you have to find what works for you. For me, I eat meat and veggies. Mm -hmm. I eat, you know, all organic grass fed. Uh, I clean all my vegetables and fruits from pesticide. And uh, I make sure I'm standing when I'm working so that I can have energy and use my diaphragm when I'm speaking. Um, and then, you know, working on my self image and doing my exercises, right? Like I have this document next to me that's like 18 pages of basically who I have to become in order to be successful. And it has all the images of what I want, all the things I'm grateful for in the body that I want and the things that I want and the watches that I want, you know, all these things. I look at every single day and I program my self image. There's a great book that everybody should read called Psycho Cybernetics, and it talks about how the power of self-image and awakening the subconscious mind and how your conscious mind is, you know, it is so limited, but your subconscious mind is so powerful. And so how we program the subconscious mind is what we do with the conscious self. And so a conscious activity, like all the ones I just listed, plus this will constantly will raise my self-image, will get me to a self-image where I'm deserving of the goals that I want to achieve. And so I believe when everybody looks at this charisma and they're like, oh, Johnny's just like that. He's born with charisma. Well, most people don't know that I was deemed misdiagnosed as autistic at age seven. I didn't speak for two years from seven to nine years old because something very traumatic happened when I was a kid. And I had all these communication blocks. I used to stutter when I spoke. All I would do is, you know, write poetry in my room and do art and distance myself from people. And now people see me and they're like, oh, Johnny's this charismatic person. He was always like that. Well, to those people, I say that that's bullshit. It's all training and development. It's all personal development. What you're looking at here is a product of habits and environment and successful people influencing me and me actually doing the work and building the structures in my life and having systems and constantly building them and never admitting that I am where I need to be. Because, you know, if I just Kaizen, like JC, like Jason Capital says, Kaizen 1% better every day, then I know that I can be the bold badass that I am for the world. I know that I can be Zen because I'm programming myself to be Zen. I am Zen. I am a bold badass, right? And so I think, uh, you know, when you have a routine that's combining the mind, body, and spirit, and you're constantly not looking at bad programming and then you're giving yourself good programming, I think that's the key to being successful in business and life and being fulfilled along the way, if that answers your question. Man, really nice, Johnny, really nice answer. So my question is about visualization. So I already understand that you do some kind of visualization with the list. Uh, but I want to understand a little, a little bit more about the, the process, if you can describe me. Yeah, before I talk about visualization, I think what's really important is the power of declaration. When I was 17 years old, my wrestling coach in high school, he believed in me and wrote me a check for $1,500. And he said, this is super legal, Johnny. I'm writing you a check for 3% of my income. I'm a plumber. I don't make a lot of money but I truly believe that you can be a state champion in wrestling. And so he wrote me a check to go to the best camp in the world, hands down, world-class people, 300 people go to this camp. It's called Jay Robinson's 28 day intensive wrestling camp. 
and it's in, based in, in University of Minnesota. And at the time, the University of Minnesota Golden Gophers wrestling team was three-time national champions. They had Olympic gold and silver medalists and gold world champions. And the camp was run by Navy SEALs and Army Rangers, okay? And so I went, I had the honor and privilege to go to that camp when I was 17 years old. It was actually my first exposure to any sort of personal development. I mean, the camp, we did affirmations in the morning. We did gratitude statements at night. We journaled throughout the day. And I thought it was just going to be a wrestling camp working out. And even though we did four workouts a day, it was really a mindset camp. And one of the things we learned there was the power of declaration, was saying you were going to do something before you visualize it. So I think a lot of people talk about visualization and visualization being key. There's hands down, it is key. I mean, science says, and there's numerous studies where they've strapped people up and studied their brain frequency of like gold medalist skiers, Olympic skiers going down a slope in real time versus visualizing them going down that, that ski slope. And they're really neurologically, there's really no difference in the frequency and brain pattern. And so the brain does really doesn't know the difference between something that's real and something that's imagined. And that's actually talked about in the psycho cybernetics uh, book uh, as one of the exercises is visualizing one of the things you're being, you were successful in and then leveraging that for what you currently want to be in successful for as a way to get into the feelings and action space when you feel the feelings of the success that you already had, and then you think of the actions you have to take to achieve the new item, you're much more likely to achieve that because you're bringing about the automatic chemical response system of what happens chemically in your body when you succeed at whatever it is you succeed at. So visualization is key, and it, science shows why it's so powerful and how real it is. But I think what's equally important is the power of declaration and saying what you want to achieve before you achieve it and then going to visualize it. And in fact, going back to the camp, every night we used to do a hypnosis visualization exercise where a Navy SEAL would give us a story about how they got dropped into Iraq during the 2000 war, 2001 war, mm -hmm. uh, and how they crawled for two miles you know, basically piss shitting themselves to take the sniper shot they never took, right? To give us a story about how everything can be conquered with your mind and with your spirit and with, you know, visualization. And then after this Navy SEAL would tell us a story every night, that all 300 of the wrestling camp attendees would lay down and they would go through a visualization exercise where they would visualize winning the state championship and what sort of feeling and going through each progression and what challenges that you'd go through during that match. And I went from being a no ranked wrestler in the state of Michigan to being one of the top three wrestlers in the state of Michigan the very next year, going all the way to the state quarterfinals and wrestling the returning state champion, all because of visualization. When you look at how many years everybody that got there wrestled, the average was seven years. I only had wrestled one year, right? And I got to the highest level of wrestling purely from visualization and mindset and doing the little habits that successful people do every single day in that sport. So I think visualization is key, but you also, like John Astroff says, is you have to have the law of Goya, which is the law of get off your ass. You have to take the actions, right? Uh, but I believe visualization and the power of declaration can put you into action. If you truly feel during your visualization exercise, you feel the success and bring about that chemical change, it will propel you into action if you're having a hard time taking action. Whoa, whoa, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I'm also, let me say, I'm also a big, big fan of martial arts. So now what I want to ask you, it's, uh, first, how do you describe your mindset and how do you think that uh, the wrestling part of it had uh, that helped you to sharp your mind, if I can say yeah. that? Yeah, my wrestling coach in high school taught me, Johnny, you got to be the first one in and the last to leave every single day, whether you're day one or day 1000. 
And so I've taken that philosophy into my sales career. And I was always the first one in the office and the last to leave every single day when I was at the first day of my job to the height of my career. And I truly believe that, you know, you can work smarter. It's not all about working harder. But if you're obsessed, you're never going to be average. You look at George St. Pierre, you look at Khabib Nurmagomedov, you look at, uh, you know, Muhammad Ali, when you look at uh, Mike Tyson, when they were at their highest is when they were obsessed with their sport, their craft, their martial art. And I love martial arts because growing up, I actually had a brother who was a Golden Gloves boxing champion, amateur boxing champion. And I learned at a very young age that martial arts, can really, really show you how to master your mindset and how to master the mind and body connection. And so I think everybody should play sports if they want to be successful and happy in life. And martial arts is one of the greatest things you could do because it works both sides of your brain, right? The creative and the, lot, the very strategic and mathematical science part of your brain, right? Because martial arts is a science and an art in one. And so I believe it works your brain out in ways that I can't even scientifically describe because I'm not qualified to do so. Um, but I know that it teaches you intensity. It teaches you discipline. It teaches you being your word. You say you're going to do something and then you go do it. Your martial arts, and you ask any martial arts uh, practitioner or coach, any boxing coach, any wrestling coach, they don't tolerate you missing practice. They don't tolerate you not showing up. They don't tolerate you even being one minute late, right? And so that sort of discipline and that sort of commitment to mastery every single day, get 1% better. You're throwing your jabs one day. You're, working, you're, you're not working on your jabs, your right hands, and everything all in one day. You, you're, you're stacking that repetition and building and building. And I think martial arts has been – one of the most profound things that's changed my life and has allowed me to be successful in whatever it is I do is because I bring that same mentality that all my martial arts trainers have taught me and brought it into business and life. So I love that question. And you actually just inspired me to go do a post on that now. Um, so thank Perfect. you. Perfect. No, no, but, no. Uh, hope that answers your question. Like no, every yeah and i feel like you it helps me a lot also to grow now i want to go i think it's a little bit a great question but i will ask it how do you define success i think everybody has to come up with their own definition of success how i define success is you know if you're laughing every day you're dancing every day you're telling the people in your life that you love them or you're showing them love you're grateful you know you are generous and you're doing what you love. I, I believe the money will come as a byproduct of helping other people and putting people first and profit mm. second. And so if you do what you love, you're going to be all about the people versus just the profit. So how I define success is it's how, you know, how I define it, right? How you define it is going to be different for you. Exactly. So, you know, so, so for me, it's, it's when, you know, you're healthy, right? Because health is number one. Without energy, you have nothing, right? You have good relationships in your life, right? Mm -hmm. You have good communication in those relationships, right? So I really believe that the quality of your life comes down to the quality of your relationships and the quality of your relationships comes down to the quality of your communication in those mm -hmm. relationships. And the quality of your communication comes down really to the communication that you have with yourself first. And so that's why I really like spirituality or religion and or mindfulness, meditation, something where you can get outside of your body into, mm. you know, into, you know, connecting with nature and consciousness on a greater level. And when you can do that, you can start to see that it's really not about you. It's about other people. It's really not about what you make or what you achieve. It's really about, you know, how connected you are to other people. So how do I define success is really, how good are your relationships? How strong are your relationships? And that, and if your relationships are strong, you tend to be really good at business too, you know? So, um, so I think that most people aren't good at the relationships because they haven't healed a lot of their childhood trauma. Mm. We all have different, we all have experiences in life, but our environment shapes a lot of our pain and our trauma growing up. 
in a lot of whether we're motivated to achieve one thing or not or want one thing or not i think we are stuck comparing ourselves so much because that's what the media and movies and tv influence us us to think but i but i truly believe that if you have strong relationships and you're you're doing what you love and what you love is helping people with something right that you went through that you overcame that's how i really define success and fulfillment yeah perfect perfect Jim. so I, I i saw you touching in the point that i like meditation uh do you do meditation which kind of meditation do you do yeah uh, i mix it up um okay. i'll use apps like pizzas or calm or i'll find people who are really good at what they do like marissa peer uh who's really good at you know understanding the neuro linguistics the programming that happens there for your you know conscious and subconscious mind and um and how to deal with trauma and pain and physical pain right um also like joe dispenza so i'll listen to joe dispenza marissa peer i'll listen to different apps i'll mix it up sometimes i'll do you know a guided meditation other times i'll just breathe and meditate myself without anything right so um yeah perfect so i want to talk a little bit more now uh, about the nonprofit uh, organization to you how the people can donate if they want to where they can find you if you can tell me a little bit more that you want to share with us yeah i appreciate you bringing that up yeah so our website's called through you.org through you just how it's spelled mm -hmm. and our uh, instagram is at through you org o-r-g and um yeah we're a nonprofit. we're in our first full year in business and we built we have built two schools and one water well to date we've done three projects we were supposed to do four more projects this year but because of COVID-19 we weren't able to actually do that um but our goal is to is to really break the cycle of poverty and show people that life happens through you and create a through you lifestyle where people can be all over the world in different communities in the through you and living the through you lifestyle which is being the change you wish to see in the world um, and so how we're accomplishing that is just be like bringing equality to the basic necessities of life and so you know when you have the basic necessities of life and you know you you're you're on a level of being humane right and so i i think that we don't have a money problem there's plenty of people with money i believe we have a structural problem where there's just not the structure in place to help the people and so instead of becoming wealthy and then starting a nonprofit i wanted to build something while i build wealth because i truly feel like if we if you say that you can't do it until you have some day you'll always tell yourself that and you'll never leave your mark you'll never help other people and so um you know so it's been an amazing ride every time i go into these villages vasco it's crazy i mean there's we went to the first trip was in malawi africa where you know we built a school for 560 kids in fact like over 600 kids go to that school right now and we lived in the villages for a week and built the foundation and broke ground with the community. And it was like out of a movie. The kids were screaming and dancing for us. They had never seen anybody outside their village, right? Uh, let alone Americans coming into their village. And, you know, they, they welcomed us with open arms and we slept in their village. We played soccer with the kids. Uh, you know, we learned about the gender roles in the community. We learned how to sing the songs and dance. We walked miles with 40 pounds a bucket of water on our head while we dropped the water spilled it the woman there would go three miles with 40 pounds of water on their head and they wouldn't even flinch i couldn't even believe it and um you know the work ethic that those people have and how happy they are even though they don't have clean water even though they have very little food they're so happy and so generous and uh, you know it really brings me down to a very connected level with human beings when I go on those trips. And so my goal is to take a thousand entrepreneurs in the next 10 to 15 years on these trips so that they can be inspired that life happens actually through me and through you, you know, making a difference and creating community and showing people love and generosity and belonging to something. 
I just want people to get that experience of being on those trips. Um, and so that's our mission. That's our goal. And that's where people can find us. Oh. And if, uh, do you have any way that it's possible to donate? Are you doing, are you accepting some donations? Uh, yeah, or? well, right now we don't have any active projects. We already raised money for, we don't want to just take money to take money. If we have an, mm. a, if we have a donor, we will take it and put it in the account and then mm. donate it to the school of their choice or spread it out. Okay. Um, but right now we don't have any active projects, but people can definitely join our newsletter and, and, and inquire on social media or on our website. And, um, that's how people can reach us and, and, you know, consider donating if they want to. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's not necessary right now as we don't have any active projects. We actually raised 40 grand for a school that still needs to get built because of what happened with COVID-19. So, um, yeah. Okay, perfect. I will let the, the link in the description of the video, the, the Instagram and the website. So uh, the next, no, it's thank you. Thank you, Johnny. So my next question, I think it comes with a way. Uh, what is the legacy that you want to leave uh, behind? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I just want to, I want to be able to show people that their past isn't their future. It's not who they are their past is an opportunity to grow and expand and reframe the past. So I really want to get into teaching people how to reframe their past and associate something that was negative or a loss to them and show them how to psychologically reframe the past into a positive experience. It's an opportunity to be grateful, to grow, to learn, to inspire others. And so how I want to leave my mark besides building schools, and water wells and creating equality with basic human needs is showing people that anything and everything is possible if they can just get out of life happening to them if they can just get out of all those things that happened in their life in their past and show them that they have the power of choice that they can choose whoever they want to be and whatever they want to do and so that's the mark and legacy i want to leave on the world yeah, exactly that life happens through you i think yes it's That's right. exactly the mark. So I want to talk also uh, about, you already talked about the psycho-cybernetics. Uh, you are the third guest that recommended me that book. I want to know, it's really, I think it's really nice. I think it's a synchronization of, uh, of life. Uh, if you have any other book to, because I, I like to read, to recommend me. Yeah, I think the five books that are really good are, um, you know, The Morning Miracle by Hal Elrod, uh, Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Mindset by Carol Dweck, um, Thinking in New Boxes, um, yeah, The Alchemist, and uh, The Power is Now, The Power of Now uh, by Eckhart Tolle. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you could read those six right. or seven books over and over and over and master those principles, I mean, I'll, you can make a lot happen. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, learn and apply, exactly. So uh, I want not to ask you if the people want to talk to you, if they want to, uh, some coaching, where they can find you? Yeah, you can just follow me on Instagram at the Johnny Anton. It's also my LinkedIn and my Facebook. You can hit me up on any of those social medias. It's at the Johnny Anton, T H E J O H N N Y A N T O N, and uh, I'm pretty available and respond to everything. I uh, will also put in the link uh, in the description. So, any last advice that you want to give me and to the listeners? Um, I mean. No, <laughs> just be great. Have fun. Okay. Love on people. Lo love, love, laugh, live, you know, like, like a cheesy Hallmark. Yeah, it's uh, a great card, advice, right? man. <laughs> it is easy. It's, it's sometimes it's easy to, it's easy, but it's difficult to act on it. And yeah, I, will try yeah, to, and dance. You're living, I think when you're living in concept too much and you're saying things are difficult, you give them, you give things life that don't really have life. Right your word is your 
your word is your world. So when you mm. say things and it comes out of your mouth, like the power dec declaration, I think what that does is it creates a world around you that's real because you believe it's real. And so you're going to act upon things being hard if you say that they're hard. But once you start changing your language and saying it's easy and it's fun, things are just going to flow right through you. I think human beings are just so resistant to whatever it is they're experiencing because they're always having that automatic survival mechanism that prevents them from just taking the action. You know, you just got to have fun. If you're not having fun, then why even do it? I will say that is the last great advice to end. <laughs> Really, Johnny, thank you so much for the opportunity. I wish you a great life and a great day. And uh, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Go to Johnny Instagram. Ask him some question that is available. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. It was an honor and pleasure. Basket. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you.